Welcome to Camp Winter Rainbow. It all began 43 years ago when my wife, Jahanara, asked me to babysit our son, Howdy Do Good, at Sufi camp. Uh, I noticed that all the attendees that had children were handicapped, so I said, hey, give me the children. And next thing you know, they had given me a cabin and several other volunteers, and it became amazing. The following year, they gave us a whole other campsite. And then we would do two weeks there of uh, circus and performing arts camp because one of the guys was a juggler and a tightrope walker. And so we began to develop not just a theater and art camp, but a circus camp. And we moved from colorful California to the land of enchantment in New Mexico, where we would do two weeks and then to the Omega Foundation in uh, New York State. And this was kind of tedious, as you can imagine, getting on and off airplanes with stilts and uh, uh, juggling equipment and unicycles, and it was nuts. So what a thrill it was to drive up this driveway onto this property and see that grove of oak trees. And I immediately envisioned the teepees, which, lo, they appeared, 17 teepees. And we are now on that beautiful stage that uh, gnashes my teeth. The children learn about my rainbow teeth when I do an event uh, where everybody is introducing themselves and I come out on the stage in total darkness and I say, years and years ago when I was a boy and there were wolves in Wales, I was a teenage beatnik and I used to sit around my pad, you dig, writing these little poems like haikus, her polished brown hair hold only a memory of the winter rain or for Jerry, the fat man rocks out, hinges fall off heaven's door. Come on in, says Bill. That's Bill Graham. For those of you who are not uh, with clues, uh, he was the great impresario of rock and roll uh, for the free world, actually, until his demise in a helicopter crash which was uh, indeed tragic. And we were doing dead shows and decided to proceed. And I uh, turned my face into the Bay Area with my teeth being the Bay Bridge. And uh, <laughs> I charged a dollar to look at my teeth. And <laughs> Afterwards, uh, the ghost of Bill Graham said, you schmuck, you should have made it the Golden Gate. You could have got more money. <laughs> and as Bill always used to say, it's not the money, it's the money. <laughs> so here we are in lovely Laytonville. And at the end of my skit, I explained to the children that all my teeth were extracted through painful pulling out of teeth until there's nothing left but slimy stumps and not even that. But little children, they look up at me and they say, hey, mister, you got killer, colored teeth. And the whole staff says that. And I said, yes, but they come out and I take my teeth out and shine a tiny flashlight on my gums. And I say, brush them if you got them, and the lights come up. And they run to their toothbrush areas after inspecting my uh, lack of uh, dentures. <laughs> and then, of course, they're very enamored to study my rainbow bridge. 
Mm -hmm. Could we have the next slide, please? Welcome to the labyrinth at Camp Winter Rainbow. Labyrinths have lighted up my heart for at least half a century, going back to when I was taken uh, to the Sun Temple at Mesa Verde by Hopi elders John and Mina Lanska. And I saw this shape uh, etched into the whatever that material is that some temples are made out of. And I said, what is that shape? And they said, oh, wavy gravy. That's merely the master plan of the universe. I think it was Mina Lanska who shared that little tidbit with me. And I said, could I borrow your bick? And I began to inscribe it. And I've been inscribing labyrinths all over the world ever since then. Big ones, little ones, all size of the ones. So it came to pass that here in the field of Camp Winter Rainbow, I created with a lot of help from a lot of friends like campers and counselors, this amazing, wonderful labyrinth. I began uh, by tracing the shape with blue cornmeal. I guess you could use any color cornmeal, but blue is kind of sacred to me and a lot of people. So I drew it out and then we, being the campers and staff members alike, grabbing stones from the creek to top the cornmeal until the cornmeal was totally invisible, covered by rocks. And then uh, we added uh, white river sand, which makes it glorious to walk without shoes, which uh, when we walk this labyrinth, we suggest that you do just that, remove your shoes and walk the labyrinth, although it is optional. And the labyrinth is filled with the prayers of 10,000 young people. So it's just buzzing, cousin. <laughs> and I think that it is the spiritual heart of Camp Winter Rainbow. And kids get to walk it uh, a teepee at a time under the stars. And I suggest to them to feel down into the earth. There is an energy there we call the spirit of Gaia, the earth mother. And if you have any cares or problems, you can share them with her. Her invisible arms are enormous. And many a camper has come out of this labyrinth much lighter than they walked in. If you have prayers for loved ones, I suggest you launch them from this special spot, once again filled with the prayers of 10,000 young people. And then, after emptying your heart into the center of the labyrinth, you rise up and follow the path out, thinking of each step as you take as a prayer for peace on the planet. As Laura Huxley said so prolifically, it works if you work. People have asked me, Wavy Gravy, what is your greatest legacy? And they expect me to say the Save a Foundation where we've enabled uh, over 5 million people to have their sight restored. But no, my greatest legacy are the children who have come out of Camp Winter Rainbow that give me nostalgia for the future. They uh, are universal human beings that with all this juggling and stilts and stuff, they learn timing and balance. I refer to it as survival 
in the 21st century, or how to duck with a sense of humor and a modicum of love and compassion, which they certainly have plenty of that. I'd like to introduce my, my staff, which is this stick. And on this stick, it has my life story. Right here, I'm 1936, born in East Greenbush, New York. 1941-42, we moved to Princeton, New Jersey, where as a tiny baby, my parents speared me into the hills because Orson Welles suggested we were being invaded by Martians. In my toddler years, uh, my mom used to put me in the front yard for my morning airing. And I was right in the walk path of Albert Einstein, who was a professor at Princeton University, which was just across the parking lot. And one morning, uh, Dr. Einstein came by and spotted me uh, where I resembled a tiny Winston Churchill. He asked my mom if he could take me for a walk around the block. And my mom's flabber was totally gasted as she agreed. And so I got to go around the block for a number of days with Albert Einstein. I remember very little, perhaps a shock of white hair that predated Don King by half a century, a bristly big mustache, a sweatshirt, no logo, uh, likewise sneakers, probably no logo. And uh, the thing I remember most is his odor. You do remember smells as an infant, and I remember the smell of Albert Einstein, which I have not smelled since, but I suspect that someday I'll be walking down the street and I'll go, hold it, excuse me, uh, you smell like Albert Einstein. I tried to teach my newborn son to say E equals MC squared. He mastered the E, but not much else. That's showbiz. Fade to rainbow. There you have it. Pretty cool.